Hi there and welcome to my next tutorial on using ML API with Unity. Now my last tutorial was very popular but unfortunately Unity has taken over and uh, they've made quite a few changes to the API. So all we're going to do is we're going to run through the beginning stuff and we're going to get ourselves installed again using the new process in order to do this. So all you need to do is go to Window and Package Manager. Now if you go to the website and look at the instructions for installing ML API, so this is just docs-multiplayer.unity3d.com um, for this ML API one, you can see the, the link from here. Um, it, ins it insists that you um, install the release version, so you can just copy this URL right here as with the instructions, and then inside the package manager in the plus up here, you just add the package from a git URL and just paste that in and click add. Um, this will take a few seconds and when it's done you'll be ready to start going with your ML API stuff. So the next important thing to install is uh, Parallel Sync. Um, in my last tutorial I used uh, a different package but this is a sort of slightly newer and um, a slightly better package that uh, works very well with um, Unity 2021. So it's called Parallel Sync and you can just Google this. I'll also put a link in the description. But uh, you'll see from the instructions in here, there's also another um, GitHub URL that you can use in order to um, install that. So from a, um, a UPM package, so you can actually install that that way. So if you just copy that again, and um, you go back to this package manager and then add a package from URL, just control V and click add. And again, um, this will take a few seconds to install the package. And I'll show you how to get this up and running and working. So with Parallel Sync installed, what we're going to do and, and what we use it for is we want to create two um, copies of the same project that are completely linked so that you don't have to continually build your project inside of uh, Unity in order to test a multiplayer functionality. So if you just click on the Parallel Sync menu that's popped up and click on the Clones Manager and then click Create New Clone to make a new clone of your project. So what it does is it just copies the um, project that you have into a new folder and uh, it gives it a specific name and convention so that you'll you'll be able to see this when it comes up. But um, you'll have an exact copy that you'll be able to open up in a, in a second monitor or on the, the other side of the window once that's done so that you're able to just synchronize between those two and be able to make your life an awful lot easier when you're um, doing multiplayer programming so you can test things without having to constantly wait for the builds. So um, you'll see that it's made, our, made a clone. Um, it's put it in the same place as you'll have your other one. Um, the, uh, it's already under uh, named it as underscore clone zero and all we need to do is um, click on this open a new editor and uh, this will open up a second instance of the Unity editor. I'm currently using 2021.1.2 um, and then uh, you'll be able to have a, an exact copy, an exact replica of one project and you'll be able to sync between the two and I'll show you that in a second when it loads up. So you can see we've got two instances of uh, Unity running so um, you can actually dock them side by side if you really want to um, but you, uh, if you've got two monitors like me you can put one of the, the, the clone on the other monitor and just work on one. Um, what happens is uh, it's real simple if you make any changes to uh, one scene on this side here. If I um, add this cube, save the scene, um, when you click on the other one, it'll notice that there's been a change made to the project. So uh, I need to be on the same scene, obviously. So I'm on sample scene and uh, it'll just sync those changes across. So on my um, master one, if I move this um, cube and I save it, I just click over here and notice this. Notice that the uh, scene had changed. You just reload and the changes happen. So this synchronizes across and makes multiplayer programming a lot quicker and a lot easier to do. So we want to be able to test this and there's a couple of things that we're going to have to do. So first up, we need to create ourselves the uh, network manager. So I'm going to create an empty game object. I'm going to call this um, net uh, network manager. And uh, we're going to add that ML API network manager component to it. So from add component, just go to ML API and choose the network manager. Uh, they've renamed all of these. We'll set the network manager up um, first up. So one of the main things you'll notice is this big um, yellow exclamation mark. What it's saying is we don't have a network transport. So we're just going to select the UNET transport to begin with. So the UNET transport is really good um, for uh, local area network stuff. And uh, you can uh, self-host 
um, a server version of it using this UNet transport. Um, but um, obviously the relay, you need a relay server if you want to be able to get through and that punch through and stuff like that, which we can cover a bit later on. Uh, right now, we'll just use that as a simple uh, setup. It's one of the easiest ones to set up. You'll see we can leave everything else as it is for now. Um, you'll see these buttons, the start host, start server and start client. With the network manager on the scene, if you hit play, these will become enabled and you'll be able to start a host or a server or a client. You'll see also, um, I will point out this UNet transport. This is the transport we've just added. It's a separate, separate component that you'll see gets added and you'll see there, there is a connect address. Now, if you're connecting across LAN, so if you're connecting to uh, separate computers on a different, on the same network, um, you just need to know the IP address to type in. So the of the host and uh, it would go in here and we can write some code later on to, um, create some UI for that in uh, later on in the series. But so far, um, we've got the network manager working. Um, the next thing is we need something to actually spawn so we can tell that it's going to work. So we'll just make a, a really simple game object. So I'm just going to create a 3D object um, as a cube, uh, as our test cube. And I'm actually going to call it test cube just now, um, like a test player. Um, this test cube, we're going to turn it into uh, a network ready prefab that we can use as the player and uh, then we'll set up the network manager so that we it knows about it so it can spawn it in as the player so there's a few components that you need to add um, to this uh, first up we're going to add from the ml api again we're going to add this um, network object and that means that it will become a network object and it will um, have all of its uh, some of its properties sent across the network and synchronized with other connected clients um, and we're also going to add the network transform so that we're able to um, see the position changes as the object moves around um, by control from the player so I'm going to add it right now even though we're not going to write any code to make that move around right now but we've got a few options in here that I'll cover later so it does need to be a network object in order for it to be um, spawnable and um, all we do from test cube now is I'm just going to drag it and turn it into a prefab and put it on my scene as test cube um, if, uh, now I can delete this from my uh, scene, go back to the network manager and you'll see that it's already added the uh, registered scene name as sample scene. So we need to register all the scenes that you need. So this is currently called sample scene. So this is registered and we need to register a network prefab as well. So we hit the network prefabs list is empty. We'll hit plus and uh, we'll choose the prefab. So I can just drag and drop it straight into this slot here. Um, do we want it to be the default player prefab and we just tick on that? Uh, yes, and it will spawn it automatically in. So uh, we've got all this thing set up, so we just need to test it. So I've set my two instances up um, on either side of my screen here so you can see what's going on. But we have um, the network manager. If you select the network manager um, before you hit play, it makes life easier. But um, to test it, we're going to spawn that prefab in and we're just going to check that it works. So I'm going to run this one. You'll see that the network manager comes up um, in the don't destroy on load. It sort of like disappears from the sample scene. So if you haven't selected it already, you can... Um, open up the don't destroy on load and select it. You'll see if you go down the list here, you've got this start host. Now starting a host, you'll see that um, a, a cube, a test cube gets spawned in as my player. Um, if I go over to this scene and do exactly the same thing, so I'm going to hit play. Um, this was reloaded earlier and select the network manager. So it's um, inside this don't destroy on load and go down to start client. You'll see what's happened is it's connected and you'll see we have two cubes on the scene. So um, one for one of the players and the other for the other connected player. Um, and just to prove that it actually works, even the network transform works. If I jump into the scene view here and I select the sort of the local player, um, you'll see that I can uh, move it around here and you'll see the same changes happening on the other side. And obviously you wouldn't do this with the scene view, you'd do this in code, but it is synchronized um, across these uh, two instances. So that's the absolute basics of ML API and getting set up. Hopefully um, you've been able to follow along. Um, it is brand new. There's going to probably be more changes and I'm probably going to have to make more um, tutorials, but uh, it is a pretty cool library. I'm looking forward to um, continuing the series. And uh, if you followed along so far, we're going to, um, in the next video, we're going to do um, authentication and um, spawn points. So creating a bunch of uh, different spawn points that the players can spawn in at. So stick with the series and uh, please like and subscribe. Cheers and bye.